Okay, a brief introduction to finding balance with Ayurveda and the gunas or the qualities. So first let's chat about Ayurveda by definition. It comes from the two Sanskrit root words, Ayur, meaning life, and Veda, meaning science or knowledge. It's at least 5,000 years old and falls under the basic guidelines or principles that we are the microcosm of the macrocosm, that the universe and all of matter is comprised of the five elements, air, earth, water, fire, and ether, that these elements are also known as the pancha mahabhuta, make up the three doshas or bodily humors, which are vata, pitta, and kapha. And you may have taken your dosha quiz already on Banyan Botanicals. If not, make sure to go over to the course beginnings and get your dosha figured out. The next statement or belief in Ayurveda is that all things in existence are comprised of the 20 gunas or opposite, 10 opposite pairs of qualities. And we're going to go over the gunas today. And of course, the foundational concept, which is really important, is that like increases like and opposites bring balance. The three pillars of Ayurveda. These are the things that we're going to be focusing on throughout the entire 21 days together. The first one is nidra or sleep, proper rest. The rest will be the sleep that you sleep at night. It will also be the rest time that you give yourself during the day. Ahara, the digestion of food, making sure that you have strong agni or fire of digestion and that your food is able to be assimilated. Nutrients are delivered to the proper tissues and elimination happens. The final one is brahmacharya or right use of energy. And this in in our context is, is energy of how we extend ourselves in the world, our sexual energy and our sense of vitality. So when we engage in proper sleep, proper diet and proper use of energy, we feel balanced, healthy, happy and content. And these are some of the main texts of Ayurveda, the Charaka Samhita, Shushruta Samhita, the Yoga Ashtanga Hridayam, and the Ashtanga Sangraha. So I'm currently studying the Ashtanga Hridayam, which is the most recent text and the most applicable to householders. So understanding the gunas those 10 pairs of opposite qualities. They exist within all of nature. And when in balance, we feel a sense of harmony. When these gunas are out of balance, they contribute to disease. So as we deepen our understanding of who we are, what our dosha is, what our prakriti and vikriti, our true nature, and what is out of balance in the moment, we can understand what qualities are present in any given moment, and we can use food, lifestyle habits, uh, what we bring in through the senses to cultivate balance. Okay, so here they are. These are the Sanskrit words and the English words and the opposite pairs. Guru is light and lagu is heavy. So light could be something like water, where heavy would be like heavy cream. Okay, so just getting an idea of where light and heavy present themselves in foods that we eat, but also in nature, right? We can have a a day that feels heavy, perhaps because there's a lot of snow on the ground and it's melting and there's mud and earth. Or maybe because of an experience that we've had that leaves us feeling very heavy. And light is the same thing. Like think of a spring day when the sun is shining and the warm breeze is blowing and flowers are in bloom. Or when you've had a really positive experience, you feel light. 
So the same goes with all of these qualities. Again, they apply to everything in nature, experiences, foods, seasons, um, things that are within us, within our body and mind, and things that are without everything that we can see, touch, taste, smell, and hear. So we'll just go through them one by one. Sita is cold. Ushna is hot. Okay. Cold like the winter or cold like cold water and ice cream. Now ice cream is sita and lagu. It's cold and heavy. Ushna, hot like a hot summer day. Hot tea or hot spices. Okay. And this applies again to everything. So really just use your imagination and start perhaps to post this somewhere and start to recognize the qualities within things that are showing up in your day or that you're putting into your body. Snigta is oily and ruksha is dry. Manda is dull. Tikshna is sharp. Shlakshna, smooth and kara, rough. Sandra, dense, and drava is liquid. Mridu, soft. Katina, hard. Shtira, stable. Kala, mobile. Yashada is clear, and Pichila is cloudy. So you can begin again to see these pairs of opposite qualities at play in all of creation. And we will begin to discuss this more and more as we talk about the specific doshas and the foods that we're going to be bringing into our bodies during the cleanse, the special teas, the herbs, and the things that are meant to help our digestion to nourish the tissues of our bodies and to improve our overall sense of well-being and vitality. So these are the gunas. Now there are also the maha gunas or the great qualities. Now there are three of these. The maha gunas are sattva, rajas, and tamas. So I'll invite you to close your eyes for a moment and I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about creation according to the Ayurvedic tradition. In the beginning, there was the void. Vast, empty space. Consciousness. Purusha. Purusha experienced a sharp ping, a flash of light, a quickening and movement. This movement was Prakriti, the force within creation, the dance of life. And Purusha moved into Prakriti and Prakriti returned her love, and together they created buddhi, or intellect, vast cosmic consciousness. And this consciousness manifested as ahamkara, the individuated form. And this form, the form that is all of matter, has three great qualities, sattva, rajas, and tamas. Sattva, or sweetness and light, purity, harmony. Rajas, activity, motion, agitation, quickening, and tamas, dullness, lethargy,
stuckness and rigidity. And these three great qualities are present within all beings, in our minds and in our bodies and in the things around us. Sattva is sunlight, fresh air, clean water. The peace that you feel in meditation. Rajas is the action the movement of your cells and your blood and your breath, the movement in nature of rivers and streams and wind, and finally tamas is rest, steadiness, the foundation of earth, stuckness sometimes and lethargy, they all manifest in our reality and what we need to consider in this time together is how to cultivate sattva or the sweetness light harmony and purity of the things that come through all five of our senses so we'll make sure that we're taking in sweet conversation peaceful media getting lots of time in nature and eating foods that are pure and close to the earth. When we sense rajas or tamas, we won't fight it because they exist in all of nature, no matter what. But we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep them in balance and we will note the things that create the agitation of rajas, the quickening, the movement, or the dullness of tamas. Perhaps we don't have enough tamas and we have difficulty sleeping. In that case, eat something heavy, a little dense. We might have not enough rajas. There's a lack of quickening, energy, or motion. In that case, we might do something that inspires us and we might not have enough sattva a contentment and peacefulness in that case do something that brings about that state whether it's cuddling with a loved one practicing yoga or journaling about gratitude just notice all of these qualities, the three great qualities and the 10 pairs of opposites as you move through this cleanse and begin to embody the practice of Ayurveda. <laughs> 